Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and today we are checking out Godot 4.6 Dev 6. What you see in front of you, this is that. This is Godot 4.6 Dev 6. If you do not know how the dev releases works, basically these are the new or the first versions of the, the release cycle for 4.6. This is going to be the last one. After that we will move on to beta. During the beta we will not get any new features. This is basically frozen in time. The features we've got now are the features we are going to have in Godot 4.6. 4.6. By the way, this demo level is available. Uh, it's in a bundle of a number of different uh, Godot projects. I like seeing uh, content creators starting to release stuff for Godot. If you're interested, check out the link down below. So there's not really a ton to showcase in Godot uh, 4.6 this time around. Specifically, uh, we have one new feature, and I'm going to showcase it over here. So this is the project settings. So you're going to need to go over here to the advanced settings category over here, and then under renderer, you will find rendering device. The big change here is is this. If you create a new project now on the Windows platform, it will default to uh, Direct3D12 over Vulkan. It used to work the other way around uh, where Vulkan was the default, but on Windows platform, Vulkan drivers are not an amazing thing. So that is the one thing I'm going to demonstrate in editor. Otherwise, to be honest, most of the changes are behind the scenes. Now, I did mention earlier on, this is the final dev release, or it is slated to be. If there is a dev 7 for whatever reason, uh, it wasn't me that said that, it was them. You'll notice here, this is directly from Godot, and they're saying 4.6 Dev 6 has arrived, and with it comes the feature freeze. So they say this is the last version, and then this is the last one before beta. So if there is another one, that was not me. I had no idea it was going to happen. This should theoretically contain the feature set of what we should expect to see in Godot 4.6. Now, I covered uh, the Dev 1 through 4 releases in previous videos. So today, we're going to focus on what is new in Dev 5 and then Dev 6. And these came literally just a week apart, which is why we're not going to see a ton of new features between the two versions. Again, a very short period of time between them. Also should mean that we will see a beta of Godot 4.6, potentially before the end of the year uh, or early next year. So what do we got going on here? Well, again, Direct3D12 is now the default on Windows. Uh, that will only be for creating new projects, by the way. Uh, so you should just have better driver stability on the Windows platform. Another thing that we have here is support for Delta encoding to patching of PCKs. Now, for most people, this actually isn't going to matter because if you do a patch for your game, the patching is actually done by like Steam or Xbox or whatever platform you're deploying on. But if you deploy to a platform that doesn't necessarily have patching or you have your own patching system, you can now use this. And this is something basically called binary patching or binary diffing, where it looks at what has changed between your two things. So instead of having to change the entire file, it will just change the particular bytes that have update us. When you create a patch now uh, for this in the patching tab, you now have the ability to use this uh, delta encoding should create smaller patches. Again, for most people, this won't matter because most platforms take care of this for you. Now, this next one is, again, super niche. Gradle is a Java build system, and Android, still at its heart, is Java for your APK creation. Well, now what you can actually do is use Gradle for doing builds directly on Android. Yeah, you can actually run the Android, the Godot editor directly on Android. And if you're developing APKs for your phone or tablet, you got to deploy, you can now use this new system. Previously, what they did is used a pre-built APK and then inject your game into it, which does not work wonderful if you want to use plugins like uh, Google Play, AdMob, or whatever, you need to use Gradle. Well, now you can use Gradle if you build on your Android device. Again, a pretty niche feature. Next up, we have OpenXR. Uh, so Godot now supports OpenXR 1.1 and it will automatically enable OpenXR 1.1. Um, OpenSR is the uh, uh, Kronos backed libraries for open headsets. Uh, so Open. XR is AR and VR and MR, or Mixed Reality, Virtual Reality, and Augmented Reality, all in one API now. So that's what OpenXR is all about. And Godot now supports OpenXR 1.1. So if you're developing a VR game, that's going to be of relevance to you. And then probably the big one from this particular release is this optimizations to the 2D renderer. Um, so Godot 4.4, they introduced automatic 2D batching. Uh, and then 2D batching results in huge wins for contests that can easily be batched. The problem is not all things can be batched. And in that case, 
uh, it doesn't improve the performance and actually makes it more expensive on the GPU. In their testing, they found that most scenes we tested were CPU bottlenecks, so the increase in GPU cost did not make a notable, noticeable difference, and where it did, the decrease in performance was very small. However, over time, we have had a few concerning reports of 4.4 being significantly slower than 4.3, especially on older and lower end mobile devices. These devices also tended to be GPU bottlenecked, which made the performance regression even more concerning. So in this release, they did a huge overall to the design of their 2D renderer to reduce GPU performance cost when batching. The result is significantly better performance on a range of hardware. Uh, in our testing, the change has resulted in an improved performance on all devices in GPU bound scenarios, ranging from 1.1 to seven times faster. So you're gonna see that seven times performance increase on like maybe six year old Android devices type thing. Uh, but uh, again, improvements to 2D sprite batching, uh, and it should result in just better behavior, especially on older devices. So that was it for the 4.5 release. We've got other littler things, littler, uh, smaller things available down here. Like uh, So there are other changes as well, but those were the big ones. And then we move on to uh, Dev 6. Again, Dev 6 is slated to be the final uh, release before we get to beta. So what is new here? Not really a ton, to be honest, but again, only a week elapsed between the dev releases, so you couldn't expect too much. But one of the big ones is Tracy Profiler Support. So back in 4. Uh, so in the 4.6 Dev 4 blog repost, they had a thing about dedicated profiler support. Profiling is a way of seeing, uh, you know, basically what the performance of your game is. And that was for working with C++. Well, now they've added it for GDScript, specifically for Tracy. We'll get back to what Tracy means in just a second, but if you need to have uh, native profiling of your application and you want to see how things are performing, including your GD script uh, and also your C++ code, you now have that functionality available for you. So that's kind of neat. Uh, and on top of that, Android. Uh, so they have the storage access framework support. So Android has a lot of limitations on where you can locate files and, and in order to use them, you had to tag uh, certain things. So when you tag a permission, you know, when you load an app and it says Android needs this, Android needs that, Android needs this. Well, the more of them you have, the more likely a user is to say no, and then your game won't run right. And in order to have access to certain things, you needed to do a uh, manage external storage, uh, including these various different other permissions. So despite other scoped permissions being available for media files, such as read media images, read media audio, read media video, non-media files still required the special manage external storage permission. While workarounds did exist, the best solution would be one that sidesteps the issue entirely. And that's exactly what they have done. They implemented the full storage access framework support, adding SAF. Users are now free to open and save files from any directory with the system file picker because the system itself handles the logic for permissions. The app no longer needs to concern itself with requesting explicit permissions from the end user. So that requirement is now gone. And then again, a number of other smaller updates here as well. So that's basically what we can expect from Godot 4.6 beta. We are now going into beta freeze. By the way, the one thing I was talking about earlier on is the Tracy Profiler. This is an open source project, so it supports profiling of CPU uh, and GPU, as well as memory allocation locks, context switches, automatically attribute screenshots to capture frames and more. So if you want to really dig into the performance of your application, that is what Tracy is all about. This is an open source project. Uh, I think it's MIT. No, it's BSD3 license. Uh, it gives you an idea of what Tracy is all about. You can actually see a demo of Tracy, and here you can see it zoom in and get all kinds of details of what's going on. So there's your main thread, your uh, GPU calls and so on. I uh, drop dig into statistics for a variety of things. So here you can see what your game loop is doing, where it uses time. You can come here and see how memory is being used and so on. There is a ton of detail about uh, what frames are going on with your application, a number of details about how your CPU and GPU are being used, etc. So Tracy is a very cool program out there. And now it's got GD script support thanks to that uh, Dev 6 release. So let me know what you think of Godot uh, 4.6 as it is. Is, um, summing up. It's not as exciting as 4.5 and 4.4 in my opinion, but there are some cool things there. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.